Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, we are going to learn how to fix our gyro. If you went ahead and built yourself a new quad or you already had an existing quad and you were just flying and enjoying life and then one day it just stopped arming. So you went over to beta flight, you went ahead and you hit connect, you logged in and you found out that your flight controller is reading no gyro. Well, what do you do? What do I do? I have no gyro. Some of us might even say, what is a gyro? All sorts of things have gyros. Gyros are phenomenal. Gyros will actually tell your flight controller where it is in space. It can sense the rotation. It knows if it's front, back, forward, left or right. It is what tells your quad where it is to the Earth's axis. It's an amazing little chip and you'll find them in all sorts of stuff from computer computers to cell phones, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Before I waste your time and you sit here and watch a long, boring video about how to replace your gyro, I am going to tell you that the number one cause for your flight controller saying no gyro is because you have flashed the wrong firmware. And you're probably saying, Drain Man, no I didn't. I know what I'm doing. I know how to flash firmware, but if you have flashed the wrong firmware, your flight controller will or can register that there's no gyro. So do me a solid, jump into beta flight and flash to the firmware before the one that you just put on there and see how it does. If your gyro comes back, problem solved, you use the wrong firmware, or maybe it's a new beta firmware and it's having a couple bugs, let the devs know. But if you have already done that or for whatever reason, believe that that little pointer is beyond the point in which you are for finding out why you have no gyro, then you're gonna wanna watch this video. Let's go. All right, pilot, so you're all over the internet. You're just hunting and searching and looking and trying to find why I've got no gyro. Well, guess what? You have reached the point in your troubleshooting that you have come to the conclusion that it is a hardware issue. Well, guess what? I've got your back because if you've got one flight controller, you've probably got others. I'm going to show you how to pull an old gyro off an old flight controller, move it over to the one that you want to get working, and you're going to have yourself a gyro. No more, no gyro for you. Let's do this. So what you're looking at here is a Pyro F4 flight controller, and this guy right here has a bad gyro. It's registering no gyro, and it's not because the wrong firmware, it's not because of the moron threshold, if you don't know what that is. Well, actually, they don't even call it the moron threshold anymore. I mean, I still do, but they don't call it that anymore. Inside of the CLI, you're going to find it under gyro catlib noise limit, and you can set it however you want. And actually, they have a new setting to go with it, which is the gyro catlib duration. And what this does is this allows for you to configure for a longer minimum gyro calibration duration, which is actually pretty great because if you're flying line of sight, you'll get less drift. It's very simple. It just basically, when you first power up your quadcopter, the gyro will calibrate. So if I plug in and pick my drone up and start heading over to the field to set it down so that I can take off and fly, the gyro cannot calibrate, which can give you a false alarm as if you don't have a gyro or something's wrong with it, it can't be calibrated, whatever, when really there's nothing wrong with it, you're just roughhousing far too soon. Plug the quad in, give it a second, then go fly. So what you can do to fix that is you can chill out, put a higher value, 100, 120, whatever makes you happy. Do little increments until you reach a point that works for you. If you are not in that boat, you are in the boat of a hardware issue. Maybe your gyro is getting warm. If you've plugged in and you can feel it getting hot to the touch, that's a very good sign that it's bad. If you've plugged it in and it just simply isn't working, but yet everything else is, then it's probably fried. So what I've got here is I've actually pulled up the MPU 6000 data sheet. 
and this is a very powerful sheet to have. It's who knows how many pages long, 52 pages of just magical fun if you want to get into it. This uh, spec sheet or product specification actually works for the 6000 and the 6050. Right now, we are only focused on the MPU 6000. If you have a different gyro, like an ICM or something like that, everything still applies to you except the uh, specifications would be a little bit different. They're all gonna wire the same because they're all pretty much from the same manufacturer. And if yours isn't, read it, check it, see what it says, and pair them up, make sure that the specifications align. Change like for like, make sure that the gyro that you're putting in is the exact same gyro that you're taking out. Jumping over to this, we're gonna scroll down a little bit here. I lied, we're gonna scroll up a little bit here, and what you're gonna see here is your pinout. Let's zoom in a little bit, and you'll see here, this is the MPU 6000, and here's where we can see everything that's going on, everything that we're gonna use, everything that we're not gonna use, and here's our VDD on pin 13. This is so you know which each pin is for, and as we move closer, you'll get to see a little bit more about it, and what I'm gonna show you. All right, so you're gonna need some type of little vice, something that is going to hold the uh, flight controller that you're going to be doing the work on okay and then you're going to need another vice or you can use the same vice after you're done with it and you're going to need something that's going to hold the flight controller that is actually your donor board so you'll see here these are two of the same board this one's actually fried and this one's not we're going to pull the gyro because i've tested it it's good we're going to pull it off of this board and we're going to put it on this board all right so if you're going to do this swap with me you are going to need a pair of tweezers, you're going to need some flux, you're going to need a heat gun, and that's about it. You don't need anything more. If you have more, fantastic. I will link everything that I use down in the video description if you're interested in getting yourself a sweet setup. All right, so what I've got here is my scope. I'm going to go ahead and kick that on, and I'm going to go ahead and have you guys join me inside of the scope Arondo. So let's kick this on. There we are, we are live and in the scopey. So right here we are looking at our gyro. This is a perfectly good gyro. Let's read it, see it? I actually have it upside down. All right, fine, fine, fine. All right, so as you can see, it says InvenSense MPU 6000. Just like we were looking at, that is the data sheet for the Invents in Vincent's MPU 6000. Now, these are identical boards, but just to be safe, I'm gonna head over to the other one, and let's take a quick peek. There it is, In Vincent's MPU 6000. So now that we've confirmed that it's the same gyro, we're safe to go ahead and make our swap. All right, so it looks like there's actually some flux already around it, but let's lube her up. All right, so if you've never done this, this is how you do it. You should check out my playlist. I have a full playlist on all types of repairs and troubleshooting for electronics. Lots and lots of fun. Check them out. All right, so don't just shoot right in with the heat and blow the spot up. Make sure you go ahead and warm the board up just a little bit at a time. If you have a sensitive thing on your board, okay, maybe you've got a, uh, a connector, a plastic connector, something like that you'll want to go ahead and wrap it. You can wrap it with Kapton tape, you can wrap it with uh, copper foil tape, you can use a lot of these types of things to protect. All right, I'm gonna try not to destroy this board because I want to be able to use it as a donor board for other things. All right, here we go. All right, boom. Saw that? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Can you see the next one? There she is, and we're gonna lube it up. I personally like a lot of flux, but you do you, boo-boo. All right, here we go, moving in. We're gonna warm it up. All right, very easy lemon squeezy. Right there is our bad MPU 6000. Now what we want to do is you want to get some cotton swabs. If you have some, go ahead and use them. And just jump in there and you want to clean this all up just a bit. 
And also, don't be afraid to look around. Make sure everything looks good. Okay. All right, I'm going to clean this up. I'm not going to clean off all my flux. Why? Because I need it for my transplant. Make sure you're not bridged at all. I'm going to take a little bit of flux. All right, because this is a 24 pin QFN package chip, you're not going to get in there with a soldering iron to actually solder it up. So you are going to need a hot air gun. Do you see that little dot right there? We want to align that dot with that dot. I know I'm making a mess right now, but if you see the two, oh boy. Do you see the two dots? You need to line those up. Where's this one at? Alright, make sure you line them up just like that. And then we're going to grab our hot air gun and we're going to move back in. Holy cow, that gave me a hard time, but that is just the name of the game. It's so much fun. I just love doing this stuff, but uh, all right, there we go. Looking good, do, 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 do. All righty, pilots, I have really bad news. As you can see right here, I've got rid of an entire capacitor. Cool. All right, so now the good news is we have a donor board, so I'm going to come right over to here and then there's that capacitor right there that I took. See it? All right, so ooh, it's hot. Ouch. So we're going to pull this capacitor. Okay. All right. Now we're going to come back over here. And I'm going to set that right there. Now that would probably be easier with a hot air gun, but I was able to pull it off. Doo -doo, doo -doo. All right, pilots, so your new gyro is on. If you knock something off, put it back on, <laughs> unless it's not important, but pretty much everything on here is important. Now, here, let's do this. Let's jump over. All right, we're gonna jump back into our main screen and if you can see right here while this cools down take a look with me zoom in and what we'll do is you'll see right here right off pin 20 c3 which is a capacitor it's uh 2.2 nanofarads it's coming off a of 20 getting pulled to ground and then we've got a 0.1 micro farads being pulled to ground here uh, over here on the VDD, we've got a 0.1 microfarad also being pulled to ground. These capacitors are important. Now, if you knock off a regular capacitor that's just being used as a part of your filtering system, you know, it's not the end of the world. When you throw a large cap on, it'll be all right. But when you're talking about an operating circuit for something like a gyro and you have a very important capacitor, you know, and you know, would it work without it? I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. These things are pretty resilient. But it is crucial. And for me, when I'm doing a repair, I'm not going to risk something like that. Let's switch you back over to the scope. And let's clean this guy up real quick, huh? There we go. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a... Uh, this is not your ordinary... Oh, look how dirty. This is not your ordinary Q-tip. This is a microfiber cotton tip swab deal. And I'm just going to use it to clean this guy up. That's all. Boom, boom, boom. Now, after that's done... I'll get a little aggressive and I'll grab me a, a toothbrush, right? And I'll just give it a nice little scrubby scrub. Take a look. Okay, and we're going to clean this up all nice like. I'm going to grab my USB cord and I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Let's see. Let's find out if we have lights. Moment of truth. 
Boom, I know you saw that. I know it's hard to see, but I know you saw that. I am now inside of Betaflight on the one that we worked on. There it is right there. And if I slide over, you'll see that this is the one that is missing the brand new MPU 6000. I'm gonna slide this back over to show you. Look, right there is our connector. We're connected. Jumping inside a beta flight, all right? Let's go ahead uh, and switch the scope over to the main screen. Boom, there's beta flight. And you'll see right here, what does it say? It says gyros active. Just like that, my dudes, just like that. Now watch this. I'm gonna lean the quad, and sure enough, there it is leaning, okay? Now, if for any reason you don't believe me, I'm gonna switch to the scope, and there I am, just lifting it up. Okay, one, two, three, and we're gonna go to the main screen. One, two, three, that's your boy. Yes, that worked. Just like that, we changed the gyro. I'm just so excited, because this is just so cool. Here I was, just a few minutes ago, with a, with a flight controller completely dead, because you can't fly without a gyro. All I have, basically, is a donor board. So what do I do? I pull from another board and I throw it into this board. And now look at me. I'm ready for the clouds, ready to go. I'm going to set this guy up, wired up, throw on a freaking DJI air unit, and I'm off to the sky. I really hope this video helped you. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one.